Right. Here we go, my friends. Here we go. Okay. So what are we saying now? That this is a commentary of the Rebbe that the Rebbe made in 1984 on the 14th chapter of the previous Rebbe's Hasidic discourse called Bati Lagani. That was the last Hasidic discourse which was given out by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe because <clears throat> it was considered to be his directions for our generations, which is the generation of the Mashiach, how to bring it. And <clears throat> a short resume, the Rebbe said that every Jew is a holy temple. And the holy temple was built by Moses, that he was the seventh generation from Abraham, that Abraham began to correct the sin of Adam. Adam and the ensuing generations, they drove God's presence away, what's called to the seventh heaven. And Ad, Abraham reversed the process and started bringing it down to the world until Moses finally brought it into the holy temple. And that means to us, but we have to do work. <clears throat> <clears throat> and one of the things that works in the Holy Temple was the, 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 to be crazy. The Holy Temple, the, 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 the tabernacle, which is the prototype of the Holy Temple, the tabernacle, the walls were made of shittim wood. Shittim wood. Okay. <clears throat> so it says the Rebbe like this. Those seven things that happened, those seven generations from Adam, that they sinned and they sinned and they sinned again and drove the Shekhinah far away, that they were bad, they were sins. But after it was done, we have to say that God wanted it to happen. God wanted, because nothing happens outside of God's will. So God wanted it to happen, even though they were sins and God did not want people to do sins. But after it's done, the reason, the good thing about a sin is that <clears throat> it has to be corrected. And the power to correct a sin comes from a deeper power than to just do good without any obstacles. <clears throat> so it says the reason, that, 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 because the, it, that, that is what's going to draw down the essence of God's presence, the Shekhinah, into the physical world. Why? <clears throat> because the avo that the light of God will be revealed in the world higher than it was in the beginning of creation. Higher than it was, Yoter, even more than it was on its own in the beginning of the creation. That's what we're doing now. <clears throat> because of these sins that these people did, and they made the world so susceptible to, <clears throat> and so, as you say, the convincing to do go against God, and that God is not even here, and where all these other weird religions come from, and all these mistakes come from, and atheism, and all these things, well, the urges which are inside of us, why it comes from, the, because the, the, that's the seven generations that sinned. God wanted it to be that way. Why did he want it to be that way? So that we would defy it, and we would transform it. And by means of our defying bad and transforming bad, there is a, a more revelation of God, more than what it was in Gan Eden before Adam ate from the tree. That's what I mean, Tzadikim Yerushalayim. That's what I mean, the Tzadikim. <clears throat> they will inherit the world and make and dwell forever on it. Forever means God, but it also means forever. The service of Tzadikim, which is all the Jews, is to make, to make draw down God's presence below into this physical world. This is about where we got to yesterday. Oh, we got to like this. Into the physical world on it in a way that it's forever. This is by means of doing Torah and the commandments, but it'll be and drawn down in a way forever. Why forever? We'll see. The reason why and that the main Shekhinah will be drawn down by means of the service of the Jewish people now that the, it, God's presence will be revealed here even more than it was before Adam <clears throat> ate from the tree is because now we have to transform darkness. And Adam didn't have darkness. As hapcha transforming darkness, and when the, this darkness is transformed to light by means of this, it's a better type of light. <clears throat> so you have problems in your life, you have difficulties in your life. You can't keep your mind concentrated on anything good. You have you did things bad in the past. You did things that were transgressions, that were sins, big mistakes, terrible mistakes you made in your life, right? So this is, that's called darkness. 
good. Now you have darkness, now you have to transform it. And when you transform it, it's higher than if you wouldn't have had any darkness. But doing this, this is something like tshuva, the difference between doing tshuva, returning to God, and the play in, in, in compared to the service of tzaddikim, they don't have to return anyway. The, the tzaddikim are always people that always feel God. Like it says, kadeskafia sitrachar, like it says, when there was pushed away, the sitrachar, the feeling of selfishness, then istalik yekorah, there's spread out the glory of God in all of the worlds. That by means of eskafia, of eshapcha, by means of forcing yourself, going against your nature, and eshapcha, and transforming your nature, that you really start to enjoy doing what the Creator wants, there's nimsha, and, and, and you despise anything that the Creator doesn't want, then it's drawn down a revelation of God, which is even higher. Sha'ovan Agilat, the way of revelation, is Romomut. It's a highness. It's something like the, the Special Olympics and the regular Olympics. The regular Olympics is more popular. You know, people go there, they see the, the runners can run faster and they can jump higher and they can throw more and they get this. And then there's the Special Olympics, people that are missing a limb, they're pushing a something. But those people, they have a, those people in the Special Olympics, <clears throat> even though it might not be so popular and so this, but they have a double, a, a double, uh, how do you say, yeah, the, the uh, uh, opposition. Right? And the rather they have, the, the, they have, this person just has to throw further than the other guy. Or he has to run faster than the other guy. Or he has to this. These people have to not only overcome the opposing team, they have to overcome themselves as well. So maybe nobody can see it. You can't see it. But the accomplishment is much greater. They also have to change their whole attitude toward themselves. And to the, this. <clears throat> the same thing with us in the world. We have become crippled by the our past sins and our past sins. In a way, that's a good thing. Why is it good? It's terrible. Says because we can overcome the terrible. Now we can overcome some. That does not mean you should try to do sins in order to overcome them. Because if you do sins willfully, you're kind of going to probably say, "Well, oh, wow! If I, if it's a good thing to overcome a little bit of sins, let's do a lot of sins." Because it feels a lot better to do sins than it does to to defy the sins, right? You know, you know what? I'll do one more sin, one more you know piece of not kosher food. You know, it's really tasty. And then I'm really going to return. Right? And then the next day I say, I'll return. You know what? One more piece. Now I can return from eating 101 pieces of not kosher food. This, that's a big mistake. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do things like that. Right? But we're talking about if there were bad things in the past, then th that's a good sign that you can transform them. Okay, and therefore, Nikro Vashem Estalek. That's what it says that when a Jew <clears throat> goes against his natural will, it spreads out the glory of God. But the word is not as spreads out. It's the word goes away. Estalic means goes away. Why is it called go away? Because it's like all the world goes away. You're in a whole different level of reality. That's what's called estalic. That When a person stands against his own nature for the sake of what Hashem wants, then the whole world, so to speak, his whole being goes up. Estalic. He becomes a different person. Bezel, that's what it means. Shehat Chalas, the Mishkan, at the beginning of the of the Mishkan was from Karashim. It's from these boards that the boards were made from Atzei Shitim, from the Shitim wood. The word for Keresh is the same letters as Sheker. Keresh means a board, and Sheker means a lie. <clears throat> it's the same exact letters, and we know that everything is created from the letters of God. So the same letters are used to create the lie and the deception of this world and how we fool ourselves. Those same letters are used to make the holy temple. It's just that the lie was here first. Shekhar was here first. The holy temple was only built like 2,000, what is it, 500 years after the world was created, right? After the Torah was given. <clears throat> so Shekhar, the letter Shekhar is just a rearranged. <clears throat> That's something like ach, like the word acher, the word acher is the opposite of the word echad. Something like that. It's a like, tziruf acher. It's in another way. Acher means something else, like, like sitra achra, acher. acher. <clears throat> so sheker is really just a, an improper 
uh, or, or arrangement of God's energy, so it comes out to be lie. But if you arrange it properly, then it comes out to be good. But how do you have to arrange it properly? You have to do a work of asita, crushing. You have to make the crushing for the mishkan. And you have to make them from asi shitim. Shitim means you have to be crazy. You have to transform the sheker, the lie of the world, to kerish to the board of the mishkan, crush him of the mishkan of the tabernacle. How do you do that? By means of shtut. But you have to be crazy. You have to be crazy. The shtut of this world, of the opposite of, this, of the, the world, you have to transform that the shtut of kedusha, of holiness. Ateshiti. <clears throat> Let's take an example, a person that he wants popularity. So he's willing to do anything for popularity, anything, and he gets it. He does it. He makes it. He got to the level he's popular, and he has money, and it is everything, and this, this, but he's got no meaning. He has no, what does he have to do? He has to say, listen, you know, I became popular because I, who knows, I stood up on the stage and I ate not kosher food. I ate live, you know, rats or something like that. There, there was a guy like that. So that's how he became popular. And everybody's looking forward for me to doing it again. And if I don't do it, everybody's going to be disappointed. And I'm going to lose my popularity. I really want the popularity. And you know what? I'm starting to enjoy those live rats to eat them. It's really sort of start takes good. Someone comes along and says, man, you, you're going against what the creator wants. The creator says that's forbidden. Even for a non-Jew, it's forbidden. But you're not allowed to do it. <clears throat> yeah. So he said, yeah, really, you can't do it. But I'm going to lose my popularity. That's crazy. I'm, I'm, this is the goal. This is what everybody wants. I reached the top. You know, I'm the top of the world. And it says, what, what can you do? You have to, you've got to be crazy. That's exactly right. You have to be crazy. If you want to do what God wants, sometimes it means you have to be crazy. But in the end, it's meaningful. By means of this, made the hamshachas eager by, there's draw down the main shechina in the world. God's presence is in the world, that there's all of a sudden less people get enjoyment from seeing somebody stand on the stage and eating a rat. This is an example. And people say, you know, maybe let's, maybe I'll get enjoyment from having a family, from being a good person. Ah, that's sissy stuff. I ah, got family. What are you talking about? No, that's really enjoyment. It's a different, I'm going to enjoy being honest. All these mafia people, instead of they go and they give all the money back. So what's going on? I said, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I said, you, 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 before you were, you were doing whatever you wanted to, right? There, were, there was movies about you. You were there. You were there. No, no, I, I want to be honest. I'm getting until that's called forcing yourself until finally you enjoy it. You enjoy it. That's called making God revealed in the world. But often and allow the way you enjoy saying the truth. You enjoy being kind. Right? You can't stand this disgusting you to tell a lie. You can't bear to see somebody hurt. This is a higher than it was in the beginning. This reveals godliness more than it was in the beginning of the creation. Mamshik, but Mimer, and it continues in the Mimer and Batilagani, that on the, therefore the Jewish people are called Tzivot Hashem. They're called the armies of God. That's why the Jewish people are called the armies of God. Like it says, on that day when the Jews left Egypt, came out all the armies of God from the land of Egypt. <clears throat> That's what we're talking about in the, in the Mimer, right? Why, that the. <clears throat> The armies of God, and that that that's not a holy name, but that <clears throat> four hundred years later, whatever, when Hannah used this name Tzivot, what is the name Tzivot? Count the 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 armies of God. The Jews are called the armies of God. Why are they called the armies of God? because what does a soldier do? We'll see. A soldier has to win a battle, and the way he wins a battle is through self sacrifice. Let's explain what is the connection. Why are the Jewish people called the armies of God. Why? Soldiers of God. Because that which the Jewish people, they are not intimidated by the darkness and the lies of the world. And exactly the opposite. They transform the darkness and the lies of the world into holiness because the world essentially is good. It's really, The world is essentially holy and good. It is by, because the Jewish people, they have to be soldiers. They have to be soldiers. That's called Masirut Nefesh. The Jews have to risk their lives and or whisk their will, give their soul away, but Kabbalah all and accept the yoke of God. Accepting the yoke of God means doing what God said, even if it doesn't make any sense, even though it's against my sense. <clears throat> right? My, my, my main income is on Shabbat. I'm a taxi driver. I make more on Shabbat than I make any two days of the week. If I'm a Jewish taxi driver, I'm not going to drive on Shabbat. What's going to be with my income? I don't know. 
Kabbalah I'm going to do what God says. We're going to see what happens, right? I'm going to, that's I'm going to I'm going to do what I'm, I'm losing money. Look, I, I started losing. I'm I'm doing what God says, and it ends up okay. We have the Jewish taxi drivers. I have experience in it. Experience works out okay, but in the beginning, it's 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 a self sacrifice. It's it's a, it's like jumping into the fire. Therefore, the Jewish people are called the armies of God. Army could an army. This is soldiers. They say, oh, God, Kesha, this is the connection between this, that the Jewish people are the armies of God with the idea of going out of Egypt. When did they start becoming called the armies of God, the Jew, the soldiers of God, when they left Egypt? The Torah, this whole, <clears throat> uh, this whole uh, term, and the, the name of Tzvotash, the armies of God, this was given to the Jewish people when they came, came out of Egypt. Because the service and exile of Egypt, and similarly, and all of the exiles, all of the king, kingships are called by the name of Egypt because they are Mitzorim. Why are they called Mitzrayim? Because Mitzoros, they make trouble for the Jews. Shemitzarim, that they make trouble, they pain the Yehudim, they pain, make pain for the Jews. In the Yiddish, it says, they make pain. Pain, difficulty for the Jewish people, Yiddishkeit, Judaism, and Jews. Who in his own way of how do you get rid of this by Kabbalat Olam Asirat Nefesh? You have to have the acceptance of the yoke and self sacrifice. How you say by means of this, he may behold, Israel, all of the Jewish people, Orba there was light in their dwellings. Gam bin Kitsinim Sim, even when they're found, the Moshvotam, in the <coughs> exile of. Egypt. What happened? The the, the last plague uh, in Egypt was the, the the killing of the firstborn. But before that, there was the plague of darkness. What was the plague of darkness? There was this intense super darkness all over Egypt that no one could see anything. You could not see anything. If you put your hand in front of you, you couldn't see anything. And by the Jews, they could see. By the Jews, it says that not only could they see only in their Dalit Amos and the area around them, but also Bakal Makom, any place that a Jew, Jew went, even to the houses of the Egyptians, there was light and he could go and shine there what's in the houses and what's in the, their secret chests and the, the hidden places. Why? What's the importance of taking out the money of the Egyptians? It says, because this was a preparation for Yenat Sluit Mitzrayim. They took out <clears throat> all of the sparks of meaning and holiness and power and life and energy that were in Egypt. <clears throat> That's what kept Egypt being a superpower because they had all these units of energy and life, godly life trapped there. And the Jewish people, by means of their self-sacrifice, after this, and they, they left Egypt, they took out those sparks, and there were even more sparks. It says the Egyptians pursued them. That's going to be next week. It's a Torah portion. The Egyptians pursued the Jews. And they drowned in the sea of the Egyptians, and they were pursuing the Jews. They took all of the riches of Egypt, they took with them. They thought they were going to kill all the Jews, and they're going to have a big party. They were going to rejoice. Right? Like the, the Hamas, like the, 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 the Palestinians rejoiced when the Hamas came back and told them that what they did, oh, everybody was happy. They were having big parties, giving out candies in the streets. Right? Then it was even more. Paro went after, and they took all their jewelry and all their bling blings and all their, stores, their gold and their silvers and everything, and they took it all to the sea, and they all drowned. And it says that it all washed up on the sea. More money. <clears throat> more money. It wasn't money. These were sparks of meaning that the Jewish people, they took out of Egypt. It says that the, there was more treasure on the Bizatayam and then the the Biza the Yam, then there was on the on the uh, the, the Yam Suf, there was more treasure washed up, riches washed up of the Jewish people than there was the, than the Jewish people took out of Egypt. The Otanite suits is because those sparks of meaning that were not in the able ability of the Jews to refine when they were in Egypt because they were too concealed in Egypt, Paro himself took them out, and Jewish people were able to re redeem them at the Bizat Hayam. That's the reason we're in the world <clears throat> to use the world properly. When we do that, it says it raises up sparks. The Jewish people in, going out of Egypt took all the sparks of meaning out of Egypt. And when they crossed over the sea and the, the, the soldiers ran after them and were drowned, it says even more riches. And all these riches were sparks of meaning that were supposed to be used for holy things and good things in the world. 
and the Egyptians used them for decadence and for terror. This was the preparation for the giving of the Torah. Like it says, Vayasa Moshe to Israel, that Moses had to force the Jewish people to move from Yam Suf. That he has seen all time, that he forced them to leave these bizatayom from and my, because he said, We're doing something even greater, receiving the Torah. That's why the Jewish people, when they came out of Egypt, were called the armies of God. The armies of God, it's not a name of God, not Tsivaot Hashem, like Tsivaot, like Hashem Tsivaot. It's not one of the names of God. This is the holy name. One of the names, seven names that shouldn't be erased. Like we said, that Hannah was the first to use it. This was revealed by means of the prophets. But in the Torah, it's not mentioned this name of Tzvaot. That the Jewish people are called Tzvaot Hashem, the armies of God, it means this is Samuch. They are the armies, but they are the armies of God. It's not holy. It's not holy. We're talking about the Jewish people, how they are in the physical, normal, mundane not holy world, but they are they are totally surrendered to God. Tzivaot, they are the armies of God. It's Samuch. Shev Tzivaot are secondary. They're totally surrendered to God. The Bittl, Kabbalah, at all. This is called surrender. <clears throat> the acceptance of the yoke, like a soldier, to God, which is above nature. And by means of this, they could re uh, re reveal <clears throat> and elevate even the sparks which are found in Egypt Egypt was called Erva Ta'oritz, the most disgusting, uh, the decadent, whatever it is, the, the licentious place in the world. All, even the sparks which were con completely concealed. Okay. And the source of all this concealment comes from the name Elohim. Elohim, which is nature, and this is where we're going to take off from tomorrow. We're going to learn tomorrow. Now let's learn, <clears throat> do the Yom Yom.